Good morning, folks. 12 top science stories today, and every one of them ties together while individually hitting climatology, seismology, technology, biology, and catastrophism. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours with two bright points on the left turning into view. These are active regions, and the equatorial remnant of the last sunspot cycle is actually developing a bit in the umbral magnetic fields complex, but also at the photosphere. Umbral cores developing beneath the bright arching fields. Meanwhile, the solar wind remains well within average stream intensity. We don't forecast much in the coronal hole impact department for days, so geomagnetic conditions hopefully will remain calm. Let's jump right into it, shall we? And up first is the climate. Yet another in the list of Earth changes we see being pegged to natural variability rather than human forcing. This does apply to most major ocean effects as it is way less sensitive to atmospheric composition. But the paper suggesting that the sun does control numerous aspects of climate change continue to come as well, even if some of them stick to the irradiance and not the more effective particle forcing. Now included in that particle forcing would be the energetic electron precipitation at the polar region and its effect on odd nitrogen species. Interestingly, they claim that a warming world will increase the effect of the space weather input, which is the same result as you get with Earth's weakening magnetic field. The sun is not only a bigger player than most climate scientists have imagined, but its climatological peer pressure is getting stronger. And it helps to have the electric tools in the toolbox or else you can't truly grasp the effects these particles are going to have on the weather through that atmospheric electricity. For those who don't know, the general atmosphere follows the Carnegie curve of energy, that's up top, with individual parts of the world below. This current goes down to the ground in high pressure, fair weather, and it returns up to the ionosphere in low pressure, lightning events, earthquakes, and volcanoes. The electric current modulation by the solar wind concurrently influences cloud cover, pressure, nucleation, and wind speed. A quick note here. The Schumann resonance reporting online is so bad these days. The resonance has multiple peaks and it is supposed to shift between them with hourly, daily, lunar, seasonal, annual, and solar cycle length patterns and oscillations underlying the effects of the current solar wind and nearby lightning. I've not seen any peak shift or anything crazy at all on the Schumann resonance in a long time. And by the way, five miles from the station, its reading is meaningless to you. But alas, when you can satisfy those conditions and study the population, within that small area around the reading, one is able to notice a correlation between negative cardiac events and that atmospheric electricity resonance signal. It's not cause and effect, it's just that the Schumann resonance is reacting to the same thing the heart is, simultaneously. By the way, when I was looking for space weather health effect papers last night, I noticed that one of the great 2020 papers we've seen so far, the first one up on the list there, got cited. I got excited to have a new paper to share, but alas, it was just Google picking up the reference from our textbook. Hold that thought. So we've done solar influence on climate, biology, technology would be up next, and we've got the 2020 NASA Tech White Paper on space weather risk and effect. From the cosmic rays to the solar system magnetic fields to the charged particle bombardment amidst photoelectric effect all the way to figuring out which parts of technological systems will blue arc and break first when space weather overloads the system. We've got two papers up next that take our now nine-year examination of electroquakes and solidly forces a tangent subfield I'm going to call geomagnetic quakes. There is now plenty of papers on strictly the geomagnetic connection to say they do deserve their own category alongside the atmospheric electricity precursors we've already seen. That first paper was from Japan, this one from Italy. The control over both their factors is the sun. Now we may seem to switch gears here, but not really. Here comes the latest in questioning the carbon-14 dating method, and whether it's something complex like this or that story about the newly dead seal they carbon dated over a thousand years old, this carbon dating thing is one of the biggest prohibitors of our proper past examination. Now well, that graphic from the NASA Tech paper really is great because it helps us think about the galactic scale ion wind and magnetic fields. You'll recall we've been examining the Parker spiral signature in the galactic level, the one that forces a wavy, undulating, rippling electric current sheet at that galactic scale just as there is in the solar wind. We've seen numerous papers every week furthering these examinations including on small ISM scales near the sun. And I'm not sure if we can get a better reminder than this. The magnetic arms, the sectors, move much faster than the protons in the solar wind. 
and that will go for the electric current sheet in the galaxy as well. And so now that we've arrived at the doorway for the galaxy to reach out and trigger a massive solar event, Let's recall what we went over today, the failure of human forcing to explain what natural variability can explain, the sun having solid control over the climate with both irradiance and particle forcing, including its influence on the global electric circuit. The cardiac connection to space weather grows stronger in the literature. We've got the space weather technology risk 2020 update from NASA. We've notched two more on the belt of geomagnetic pre-seismic signaling and learn a key fact about the electric current sheet and magnetic sectors of the Parker spiral that will scale up from the solar system to the galaxy and can inflict the 12,000 year catastrophe. Folks, those topics are chapters 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 of the textbook. The third edition of Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is 30% off during this pre-order period. Climate, technology, biology, earthquakes, and Earth's catastrophe cycle. Get it today at spaceweathernews.com publications, along with a number of other free resources. We do greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.